¿Sanche no? ¿O qué? ¿Qué? ¿Dónde no lo pusieron? ¿A dónde va a ir? ¿Qué va a ir? ¿Qué va a ir? Start just a minute. Three thirty. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I now welcome you to this uh, prestigious lecture by Professor Shigio Yoden for the webinar series being conducted at Andhra University. I'm privileged to introduce uh, Professor Shigio Yoden. Professor Yodin has been one of the leading fluid dynamic scientists from Japan and also an internationally reputed scientist. He has his early education, a BSc from Kyoto University, followed in 1979 by an MSc at the same university, and then he had a DSc in 1983 from the Kyoto University. He was a research fellow of the Japanese Society for the Promotion of Science and a research associate from Kyoto University and a Japanese JSPS fellow for research abroad uh, at the University of Washington, um, working with the famous dynamical meteorologist uh, J.R. Holton. He was an associate professor at the Kyoto University and fellow of the research abroad for Ministry of Education Japan at the University of Washington. Presently, he is serving the Kyoto University as a professor of meteorology and a vice dean at the Graduate School of Science. He is responsible for organizing a a series of Kagi schools in Japan, and then he is the chair Department of Geophysics, Faculty of Science, uh, in the during the period 2011 and 12, and from 2012 and 13, he is the chair Division of Earth and Planetary Sciences Graduate School of Science, Kyoto University. He has many awards to his credit. Uh, prominent of them are the Award of uh, Meteorological Society of Japan for his study on the general circulation of the atmosphere with idealized nonlinear models. In July 2004, he was awarded the first Asian Oceania Geosciences Society public lecture in Singapore. And in November 2013, he has got the Journal of Meteorological Society of Japan award. Okay. And uh, he has many numerical publications in all the leading journals, and uh, he has got more than a dozen publications in the Journal of Atmospheric Sciences. He is uh, widely associated with all the professional bodies in the world. He is a member of the Meteorological Society of Japan. He is a member of the American Meteorological Society. He is a member of the Japanese Society of Fluid Mechanics. He is a member of the Japan Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. Uh, and he is a theme leader on stratosphere, troposphere, dynamical coupling. And uh, he is uh, a past president of the International Commission on the Middle Atmosphere. With this uh, uh, brief introduction, may I now request uh, 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 Professor Yodan San to deliver uh, the lecture on the influence of the stratosphere on the tropical troposphere. Professor Yodan San. Okay, thank you very much. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Okay, sure. thank you. So it's my great pleasure and thank you, Professor uh, Christian, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, le le let me start the PowerPoint slide. It's it, yeah. I hope. <laughs> okay. This is the first time to use uh, this. Okay. Ah, and, yeah. Uh, we can see it. We can see it. I hope. So yeah. this is the full screen of my PowerPoint slide, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, here, here is a uh, yeah, pointer. Okay. So today's talk is a sort of influence on the tropical troposphere, and it's divided into two parts. As the professor introduced, yeah, I'm, I've been working uh, on the international uh, WCRP program, uh, SPARC, uh, stratosphere troposphere processes, and they are all in climate. This is one component of a WCRP, World Climate Research Program. And under this uh, WCS Park, 
these years, we are doing the one activity, international collaborative activity on the stratospheric and tropospheric influence on tropical convective system, TOTCS, we call. And this is the introduction of such kind of activity. Uh, Peter Haynes of the University of Cambridge and myself uh, have been uh, activity leaders and uh, there are some reports, and this is the newest one. Uh, in February this year, we had an international joint workshop on this uh, stratosphere, troposphere, dynamical coupling in the tropics. And uh, this is a group photo. Unfortunately, 10 or 12 people are cancelled due to already the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. But uh, I think uh, nearly 60 people came to Kyoto to have this meeting. And we have uh, some uh, review papers. And first, I want to introduce this uh, very fundamental concept of this activity, this such activities. Some years ago, yeah, Peter Haynes uh, drew this cartoon, and there are the three pathways with the QBO influence. QBO is a very clear signal in the tropical stratosphere. It's a change of the zonal mean zonal wind in eastward or westward or westerly or easterly phase. And this could influence the tropical uh, or subtropical uh, tropospheric circulations. And there are the three pathways. First one is uh, 1980s, yeah, Horton Tan pointed at the relationship of the QBO and the polar vortex conditions. If easterly, uh, polar vortex also weak in the winter time. But after that, annular mode variability is found, uh, not only the stratosphere, but also the tropospheric Polar jet also very have uh, associated variations with the QBO. So this is a root one. And this root two is uh, today's main subject. It's a vertical coupling. And there are several uh, possible mechanisms to explain such kind of modulation of the tropical uh, circulations or convective systems. One is a vertical shear of the zonal wind or vertical wind itself around the tropopause. The second is the thermodynamic quantities, temperatures, particularly the cold point uh, tropopause temperature or uh, static stability. There is a modulation of these parameters associated with the QBOs or any other. Uh, feed box, uh, it's amplification mechanism necessary because QBO signal is getting very small around the tropo tropopause and uh, very small in the troposphere. So this is definitely necessary, okay? And uh, here's the newest uh, figures of, to show the such kind of thing. And, uh, will be reported in the latest review papers uh, listed here. And this is again the schematics. And this is a, a observation data published in the second paper, uh, taken from the data analysis of uh, ELA interim, uh, nearly 40 years of data. And this is a all year data, and this is a composite difference of a zonal mean zonal wind. Uh, we divided eight phases, but uh, four and eight is opposite, and this is easterly phase minus western phase, or in the lower stratosphere, this is positive. So phase four minus eight is a uh, westerly wind and above that uh, easterly, and above that westerly. So this kind of layered structure is zonal mean zonal wind. And here is the uh, temperature. In associated with this wind, uh, 
profile, we also have uh, this uh, temperature anomaly, and this explains this kind of uh, meridional circulations, and arrows uh, such kind of uh, meridional circulation derived from the inner interim data as a composite difference, same for minus eight phase. And uh, this is a clear indication of this kind of relationship. And uh, interesting is uh, this green line is a tropopause, and this shading is a statistically insignificant part. On the other hand, here is a statistically significant. So not only the lower stress, but uh, some part in the troposphere, there is a significant difference between the QBO phase. And also medial circulations. These arrows are only good points that is significant. So we are interested in the, this kind of uh, remote inference to the troposphere. And this, this is some schematic, not only the QBO, but some other stress variation may influence the tropospheric, tropical, moist convection, and their organizations. So this is the shortest time scale to annual cycle to interannual time scale. So diurnal variation of convection is very clear due to the diurnal cycle for, of the solar forcing due to the rotation of the Earth. And the organization of this produce the tropical cyclones of the equator or along the equator, we have uh, another type of organization, Madden Julian oscillations. And the monsoon circulation is a seasonal cycle response to the solar variations associated with the revolution of the Earth around the sun. And the answer is a very typical interannual variation in the atmosphere ocean couple system. And I think that these days uh, climate change. And here's a counterpart of the such kind of uh, uh, intra-seasonal and internal time scale variations in the stratosphere. And the target is a possible influence of these variations to the tropospheric, tropical, convective systems and their interactions. And these there is, there is a increase of uh, interest in the influence of the anthropogenic uh, CO2 uh, forcing. And this is a society of applications for uh, these uh, by the range of the time scales. Okay. And these days, yeah, soon I will show the example of the QBO modulation of the MJO, Madden Julian oscillation. And the Madden Julian oscillation is a multi scale interaction. Each component is a moist convection with a lifetime of uh, about one hour or less. But the uh, organization of these convective systems produce the uh, MJO signals. And recently, QBO modulation of this MGO was reported. It's first you and the sun reported modulation of the boreal winter time MGO by the QBO. So they analyzed only the neutral enso winters or non enso winters. And here's the activity of MGO along the equator, from Indian Ocean to Maritime Continent and Western Pacific. And here is a composite only for the westerly phase of the QBO. So there is a, just a deviation from the climatology, about 10% or more uh, weaker in the westerly phase of the QBO. On the other hand, easterly phase of QBO, about 10% larger than the climatology. And this is a similar diagram, but uh, analysis for the eight individual phases of the Madden Julian oscillation based on the Euler based 
M0 index, and the blue lines for the eastern phase of QBO, and the red lines the western phase of QBO. So this kind of significant difference for all the uh, eight phases. So this is the first point, and we follow that list, and we made a composite analysis. And this shows the longitude, time, sections of the composite OLR anomaly. So blue colors show the relatively uh, low temperatures. That means the more active convection. And this is the history phase. This is a western phase, and this is a neutral QBO period. And uh, around the Indian Ocean to maritime continent, and this is a key day, uh, duration is 50 days. And in the eastern phase of QBO, M0 signal is strong and the persistent longer period compared to this, and the propagation speed is slower than this. And this is a significant part in statistically. Here's another example of the modulation of the monsoon. So monsoon is uh, this kind of coupling, and we analyze the QBO influence of the monsoon activities. So this is a work, collaborative work with uh, Vinay Kuma of the University of Delhi. And Syria, we are doing the collaborations via internet. Yeah, he stayed uh, cured last year and several months. And uh, these days, uh, he cannot travel. So by internet, we are doing this kind of research. Uh, let me show only a few uh, typical important slides. Again, yeah, we analyze a new, only neutral ENSO period to uh, keep the, some uh, standard SST conditions. And this shows a GPCP precipitation and uh, horizontal wind in the lower troposphere in uh, black arrows. And this is for all year composite, and this is June, July, August, this is DGA. And here's a zonal mean, uh, this is a zonal mean, zonal wind, uh, meridional wind, and the precipitation corresponding to this. And the bottom one shows the difference between the June, July, August minus DGA. So golden color shows the northern hemisphere winter season, rainy, no, <laughs> rainy season, uh, monsoon period. On the other hand, southern hemisphere, it's a negative, so the, uh, you have to change the sign for the southern hemisphere. So you can see the Asian monsoon and the North American monsoon, African monsoon, Australian monsoon, and South America. And my, our interest is the deviations or variations from these climatologies associated with the QBO. So this is a composite difference for the northern summer, but also June, July, August, only in the neutral lens period. And these quantities left hand side, and again, this is a phase four minus phase eight of the QBO. That is uh, in the lower stratosphere, westerly phase minus easterly phase. And the left hand side, uh, precipitation, OLR, and the specific humidity in the upper troposphere. So all of these have uh, similar patterns. Uh, convectively active region, more precipitation in red, and low value of the OLR, and uh, more humidity. Uh, by the way, these dots are statistically significant difference. 
So mostly uh, Indian Ocean to maritime continent and Western part of the Pacific, significant. But others, not so large difference. So zonal asymmetry is very important for this uh, QBO influence. And also this area is the uh, most convective active region in the tropics. So these are uh, rather independent data, but uh, all of these shows a good correspondence. Not only the precipitation, but all the uh, circulation patterns. Also show a good correspondence. For example, this is a vertical wind in the mid troposphere. So uh, if uh, there is a larger precipitation and uh, larger activity uh, that corresponds a positive W wind, significant W wind here. And also the uh, mean sea level pressure is negative and the circulation of the equator around here. So these are very significant uh, variations of uh, monsoon circulations associated with or moderated by the QBO. And if we focus along the equator, this is a vertical section uh, to show the equatorial pathway. So first, uh, this is the left hand side, so the climatology of uh, U and W and uh, specific humidity. So you can see the, this kind of uh, walker circulation and the uplift of the moist air upward in the, And uh, this is 90 degrees to 225. So it's, yeah, this is a geography. So uh, Indian Ocean to uh, maritime continent and uh, Central Pacific. Yeah, here. So this is a climatology and uh, circulation and precipitation oil are opposite uh, tendency and also the mean sea level pressure. And this middle and light column is a composite difference of the QBO. And the previous slide we show the phase four minus phase eight. So this, again, the arrow is only the significant part. So this circulation means this, yeah, walker circulation is intensified in the phase four compared to the phase eight of the QBO. And the more humid air mass here significantly and the dry air here. And the precipitation is significantly large here. Uh, and also where, where is opposite. So all of these quantities show the modulation of the QBO with uh, this walker circulation. So I think yeah, this is the first part. Yeah, we are doing international collaborative research, but uh, some uh, related uh, this uh, research activities in the colleagues of uh, international colleagues in Asian countries. Okay. Ah, by the way, so this is a break. <laughs> the first part one is finished. And uh, this is interesting. <laughs> Just a, a decade ago, yeah, 2010, this is take, uh, <laughs> I took this picture on my way to Bishka Patuna from Delhi. This is the first time for me to visit uh, Andhra University. Yeah. At the time of AOGS meeting, yeah, held in the Hyderabad. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think yeah, I, I was uh, another half an hour or so. So here, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our another research 
activities by using a uh, regional uh, numerical model, no hydrostatic uh, mesoscale model. Yeah. And the subject title is the uh, influence of the cube, again, the cubial like oscillations on aggregation of most convex systems in a three dimensional minimum model framework. And uh, I presented this slide as a, uh, yeah, your TCS joint workshop in this February. Yeah. And uh, this is a collaboration with my student and also Dr. Hai Huan Bui. Uh, he was a postdoc in my group for several years and moved to the uh, University of Bergen some years ago. And he, he's uh, working in Bergen. And uh, another uh, numerical model uh, pro project. So this is a uh, introduction for this uh, numerical model studies, and uh, we have done the numerical model experiment with a minimal model framework to argue this kind of. Uh, stratospheric inference on tropical, tropospheric convections for their organizations. So to study the self-sustained QBO-like oscillations in a radiative, moist convective equilibrium state, RCE, in a highly idealized dynamical framework with the regional mesoscale models. And the uh, target of the investigations already explained dynamical or thermodynamical conditions to possibly control, possibly control this linkage. And uh, this is again the idea as experiment. I suppose most of the regional model is used to the real or the simulations, some severe storms or some exa uh, examples of a disaster case to reproduce and think about the causality. But uh, this is very different way to use uh, such kind of a numerical model. And this kind of study started Many years ago, Isaac Held and his colleagues obtained a first a self-sustained QBO-like oscillations as an RC radiative convective equilibrium in a two-dimensional stratosphere troposphere couple system in limited domain model. And we have performed a series of numerical things with uh, two-dimensional framework similar to Helby et al. And published already these papers, the result. And in this study, these all of these are 2D experiments. We expand to 3D minimum model framework to produce a similar uh, self-sustained QBO-like oscillation and to study its influence, possible influence on the moist convex systems in the stratosphere within this uh, idealized framework. And this also, yeah, some part uh, published. And the last part is just a poster session in the February uh, 30 TCS joint workshop. First, uh, I'll give you several uh, slides to summarize two-dimensional minimum model result. So first one uh, took from our first paper and we confirmed the robustness of the oscillation obtained by the Hellgate uh, by changing the experiment conditions and parameters using a similar 
two-dimensional cloud system resolving no hydrostatic model. So good the size of the model is five kilometers, rather coarse. So we are calling a cloud system resolving, not cloud resolving. And uh, idealization is no rotation of the earth and uh, periodic lateral boundary condition is a very limited domain, 640 kilometers. And uh, yeah, we, we obtain this kind of periodic variations. This is the mean uh, zonal wind at the time. And uh, the period is much shorter, only 100 days or so compared to the real uh, QBO. But very regular uh, periodic variation of the wind. And uh, this is the original uh, held framework. So only limited layers in the lower stratosphere, but we expanded to the middle or upper stratosphere. And uh, this kind of oscillations similar to the real world obtained. And one difference is the tropospheric variations. In this case, even in the troposphere, there are clear QBO signals. And this difference, we think, largely due to the two-dimensionality. It's too strict to limit the competitive motions. And we analyze that example of the uh, stratospheric simulations and Nishimoto et al. Uh, found the modulation of uh, precipitations associated with this uh, QBO-like oscillation. This is about one cycle of the oscillation and uh, zonal mean zonal wind, temperature anomaly. And you can see the anomaly even in the troposphere associate with this uh, QBO. So this is these are zero in the line. And also uh, cloud properties, ice cloud and uh, water cloud. So the larger amount during this these phase, particular phase of the QBO. And the surface precipitation also have a yeah, very chaotic but uh, this kind of modulations more precipitation during this period, suggesting the more convective activities and more warm. And we studied the movement of each convective systems and the precipitation patterns, and we recognize this QBO recognition associated with the uh, alternate appearance of uh, two types of precipitation patterns. We grouped a uh, back building type or school line type of precipitation patterns based on the Hochmera diagram. These are uh, uh, two day time interval. So this is time only two days from here to here. And this is a whole the computational domain. 640 kilometers. And this is a five minute uh, lane and the uh, score line type, the convection system move this direction and the new, new convection appears in the front side. So this is a typical yeah, score line type. On the other hand, back building type, each cell move this direction but the new system, new convection appear on the rear side. So as a group, this convective system group move opposite direction. So this is a back building in the type we call. And uh, there is a periodic modulation, score line type to back building type, back building type to score line as time go this way. And the interesting or important thing is the background zonal mean zonal wind. In the score line type, this is a wind profile, and the vertical shear near the surface is very large. 
on the other hand, back building type, it's weak. And the upper troposphere have uh, one sign of wind directions. So this kind of uh, periodic variation of the environmental wind control this kind of a precipitation patterns. And this, yeah, vertical shear near the surface is very important to control this variation. So this is a characterization and uh, we realize the wind variation in the troposphere is very important to control the convex system. But which part? To study that, yeah, we have made a systematic nudging experiment by controlling the vertical wind shear of the zonal and zonal wind near the surface with nudging technique. So we, we apply this kind of nudging term, only zonal mean, zonal wind component, and we focus this kind of nudging in the lower part of the troposphere from the surface to particular altitude. And change this uh, nudging layer from surface to whole the troposphere or lower stratosphere. So there is uh, nine uh, cases, and this is a control. Uh, by the way, two panels. This is a, a wind variations as a function of time. So you can see the QBU-like oscillation. And the bottom plot for each is the precipitation. So you can see the modulation of the precipitation associated with the QBU. And here's the nudging experiment. We increase the nudging layer uh, little by little. So middle troposphere uh, or upper troposphere. So below here, nearly zero uh, wind variation, zonal mean wind variations. And even in the, this case, we still have a QBO-like oscillation, but the tropospheric wind is totally suppressed. And uh, Interesting is uh, here, we recovered modulation of the precipitations with a QBO-like oscillation cycle. And again, it disappears. So original one, so a regular uh, variation of precipitation, once disappears, but uh, it recovers in this case. So we studied further the modulation precipitation for a uh, half cycle. QBO cycle is purely uh, positive or negative uh, uh, anti-symmetric in wind and symmetric in precipitation. We composited the uh, precipitation and the uh, vertical shear as a normal as a half cycle of the QBO like oscillation. So here's a normal time and half cycle. And uh, this led to the heavy precipitation greater than 90 percentile and blue one is a less precipitation and the large difference in the control. And it's getting smaller by increasing the nudging layer. But uh, this example shows a very clear modulation of the precipitation. And uh, two more lines. Green line shows the vertical shear near the surface. At, uh, as uh, the nudging increase, this becomes nearly zero here. On the other hand, gold line is uh, vertical shear around the cloud top, or eight kilometers in this case. And the interesting is that here's a large fluctuation of the precipitation, and it's a uh, nice uh, opposite or 
negative correlations with vertical shear. So smaller shear near the cloud top prefers more precipitation. On the other hand, uh, large shear near the surface prefer the more shear precipitation. And uh, this vertical shear near the surface is more important. This is also large, but uh, not here, but here. So this, these are, yeah, finding to, 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 to which way wind profile controls the precipitation. So this is a highly idealized uh, numerical experiment and uh, some con consideration of the 2D and the 3D. And, uh, I all, only showed the 2D result uh, till now. And uh, it, this is a purely idealized situation with a score line, always score line, infinitely long score line. And it's not uh, very realistic but some idealized case to study the its interaction with the environmental uh, field. And the 3D effect is important and uh, foreign studies uh, make a similar framework, but the 3D experiment to see the difference or similarity of these 2D and 3D. And also we see assuming the non-rotation case. And if we include the rotation of the Earth, maybe it's a very different world. And uh, probably an uh, equatorial beta plane could be used under the channel geometry. And currently, uh, even in the 3D, it's a doubly periodic lateral boundary conditions. But, uh, it's again, the some distance from the reality. So spherical geometry could be applied to check this kind of thing. And many other things are rotation, rotating structure, sphere. Uh, we have uh, not only the gravity wave, but also these kind of equatorial waves we, we can obtain. And the surface conditions. <laughs> Currently, surface conditions are very, very simple. But uh, if we include the uh, oceans or just a slab ocean, SST, uh, this kind of thing is possibly important. And this these studies spatially homogeneous boundary conditions, but in the real world, those are uh, asymmetry exists due to the land ocean contrast. So this kind of concept, local circulation or uh, lo uh, local dependence of the hardware circulation, longitudinal dependence of hardware These uh, come from the uh, zonal asymmetry. And this is the main component, basic component of the monsoon circulation. And many others, yeah. So we should study these kind of effects step by step to, to upload the real world simulations. And one of the comment is the nudging experiment. And uh, I think uh, we introduced the nudging to, 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 to control the vertical shear of the environmental wind near the surface. And, uh, obtained uh, some interesting features. And I think that this is a very uh, good tool of the numerical experiment. So this is a yeah, quick summary of the 3D uh, simulations. So some descriptions, yeah. So this is the same with a two-dimensional case, vertical section. So 640 kilometers and 5 kilometer mesh and 200 layers for about 40 kilometers and uh, damping layers of course. And the, this is a standard yeah, physics options 
in the work model. And the important thing is that we don't use the cumulus parameterization, only the crowd microfit. And this is a setting for the 3D model. We assume the doubly periodic boundary condition in X and Y direction. But uh, in this case, to reduce the computer uh, load, computing load, uh, we assume the rectangular domain. So it's very large in X direction and only the limited 160 kilometers in Y direction. And we integrated the two years and obtain this kind of a QBO like oscillation for both U wing and V wing. But uh, yeah, th this kind of thing is rather difficult to imagine. So we made a hologram analysis. And uh, every 30 days, we obtain this. And I think uh, this is uh, animation. So red dot shows the top, uh, 30 kilometer altitude, and every one kilometer and 25, 20 uh, 15, and 10 kilometer. And uh, you can see rather uh, periodic variations. So this is a uh, obtained QBO like oscillation. And here's a uh, uh, variation of the variable is the precipitation. There are also uh, some modulations, but it's not so regular. So this is, uh, again, the high time sections of uh, vertical shear in any direction of the horizontal wind. So there is uh, some descending motion of the large shear layers with time and uh, temperature perturbation anomaly also show a similar feature. And again, the tropospheric variation. But the relations between the stratosphere and tropospheric is not very clear. And there are also some modulation of the precipitations. And the temperature is just an indication of convective activity. But uh, stratospheric influence not so clear compared to the 2D case. But uh, this modulation is interesting so this is a analysis time variation of the moist convective system and again this is a Hochmiller dam this is a computational domain in the long longer uh, side of the rectangular domain and for all the two-year period and uh, you can see uh, some specific period the variation of the precipitation pattern is very different. And here is the enlargement. And we call this period uh, quasi-stationary type clusters. So over 100 days or several 10 days, very slowly move this kind of precipitation areas. And other period, areas are very no precipitation for uh, several 10 days or a longer time period. So these are QS period and also the, here is a very fast moving back building type or school time line type patterns as a 2D case. So there is a, some uh, interesting two phase so this is a vertical section snapshot of the vertical sections or horizontal sections and uh, this is qs period this is the back building and the uh, score line is rather similar to this and the important difference is uh, this vertical section uh, relative humidity and here is a very dry area in the lower troposphere. 
So that's the reason why this is maintained and move very gradually, slowly. On the other hand, yeah, back building type or uh, score line type, all the domain in the lower troposphere are very wet or moist. So it's easily propagate uh, this direction all the way very quick, one day or two days to travel this time. This time. So still, yeah, we have uh, concern about the possible effects of the isotropic horizontal domain. And this is again the good correspondence of uh, domain uh, average the precipitation in blue lines and vertical shear near the surface in orange. So vertical shear near the surface is a bit the most important controlling parameter of the precipitation. Yeah. And finally, yeah, this 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 shows a 3D square case. So in this case, X and Y direction is the same length, small size or larger size. Not so large, but uh, try to increase the computational domain. And ob again, obtain this kind of uh, QBO-like oscillation in the stratosphere and the uh, quick decay of the oscillation in the troposphere. And the important thing is that computational domains are horizontally uh, isotropy. Very similar in the X and Y direction compared to the previous uh, rectangular computational domain. And again, and the photograph gives us such kind of thing. And uh, initially, there is no wind. So mean wind appears totally an internal process. And it takes several hundred days to have to establish a uh, strong wind in the stratosphere. This is the same color notation. So here's the top of the QBO like oscillations and going down. And the acceleration is rather continuous. There, there's some circular window profile and just it rotates. Some modulation in the lower part of the troposphere, but it's not so large. So in the stratosphere, I think the very constant. Okay, so one more. So we we recognize the rectangular computation that may have the large restriction of the behavior of the stratosphere to the couple system. So controlling the in this case the gravity waves generated by convective system and its interaction with the environment. I mean, I think the boundary condition is yeah, cru crucial. So this is, yeah, <laughs> not a final result, but uh, how about some? Yeah. So this is a quick summary of the 3D minimum model result. And uh, we also obtained a 3D model, uh, so a QBO like oscillation in the 3D model, both U and V. And the uh, important thing is a new type of uh, precipitation patterns, these quasi stationary type. And uh, intermittently, self reorganized, reorganized in the system. This is an interesting point. And uh, we can say there is an internet uh, quasi stable, multiple equilibrium. This situation is a kind of a stable state. But uh, this quasi station state is also another uh, stable state. Okay. And this is a very final, uh, the last slide. And uh, grand summary. Yeah. <laughs>
of the, our numeric experiment. So cubular cross is a robust feature obtained as a RC ST dynamical couple system within several kinds of hierarchy of minimum model frameworks in 2D and 3D. And the uh, dynamics got the essence is a wave mean flow interaction, and that wave is generated, convective generated gravity wave. And as I said, in the real world, much more complicated factors of the rotating spherical arms uh, produce uh, ecotory waves and et cetera. And uh, we observe the low frequency variation of the precipitation associated with the cubic oscillation. And in purely 2D case, this uh, will synchronize variation. Whereas uh, more freedom, free evolution in the troposphere in 3D case. Uh, but uh, if back to the spherical, yeah, got to the atmosphere, I don't know, it's close to the 2D or 3D. Anyway, uh, nudging experiment, yeah, we study, examine the vertical, important vertical shear with a horizontal mean envelope wind around the UTLS region to modulate the precipitation. And this could be a new prospect in the future uh, model studies of RC. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all my presentations. And uh, maybe I can take your questions. Yeah, thank you, Professor Yodin san. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, there are, uh, back, back to questions. Uh, the first one is by Professor V.B. Rao, our honorary professor here. Uh, he uh -huh. has a question like, uh, uh, can quasi-biennial oscillation influence tropical cyclones over the North Indian Ocean? Uh -huh. uh, so when is it in the pre-monsoon season or the post-monsoon season? What is the dynamical mechanism? Uh -huh. you, you mean the QBO modulation of the tropical cyclone? Yeah. Yeah. I think the Atlantic Ocean first studied Atlantic Ocean with the gray it, uh, in 1980s or something. And there is a nice uh, significant modulation of the QBO wind. And uh, I think yeah, recent static studies, that relationship is weakening. And uh, in the answer, I don't remember the exact paper, but uh, there's a couple of papers arguing the similar thing of the modulation of the frequency of the occurrence of tropical cyclones in Indian Ocean. But uh, still, yeah, I think the statistically sample is limited. It's an interesting subject. But, uh, and also, yeah, I remember another paper uh, uh, studying the modulation of the pass of the tropical cyclones. That means uh, maybe uh, associated with the uh, modulation of the monsoon circulation systems. If I appreciate it strong, yeah. Past of the tropical cyclone also modulate. So I think there are many uh, interesting scenarios, but uh, still, yeah, data and numerical effects, yeah, we are, we are still uh, limited uh, studies, I suppose. Uh, another question is, uh, uh, can final warming in the stratosphere in spring, that is uh -huh. in April, May, influence the answer to the monsoon? Ah, I, <laughs> interesting subject, I don't know. There, there is a yeah, hot subject of the influence of the sudden warming, mid-winter warming, on the tropical convection systems in the same uh, Satyo TCS uh, research activities. And recently, 
uh, interesting numerical studies uh, on of experiment 2019 uh, sudden warming and it's a large ensemble simulations with warming and uh, compare with uh, without warming and uh, they yeah they show the statistical significant influence of sudden warming so I think it's getting uh, uh, really recognized step by step for the middle winter uh, sudden warming, but uh, the original question is the uh, final warming. And uh, time, I think the timing of the final warming is a large year-to-year -year variations. So such kind of uh, large fluctuation may influence some uh, onset of monsoon. But uh, the linkage, yeah, I'm not very sure how, how <laughs> link such kind of variation, yeah. Okay, uh, another question is, uh, how stratosphere can influence the tropical expansion of the Hagley cell? Ah, that's also. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's the last decade or so, the global warming or climate uh, change, some, some correspondence with the expansion of the Hadley cell. And uh, basically attribution is a tropical, uh, tropospheric convection or uh, such kind of activity due to the global stratosphere. And, uh, yeah, I, in, in my presentation, I, I showed the second pathway. QBO modulation may influence the subtropical jet variations. So such kind of uh, stratospheric influence, including the cooling trend, may influence the subtropical jet first, and then Hadley circuit, yeah, but uh, yeah, subtropical jet is a, just a result of uh, Hadley circulation. So, yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, some, some possible linkage could ex exist, yeah. I think this, this is an important point to, to be studied from such kind of point of view, both in the data analysis and also the numerical model studies will formalize numerical studies. Yeah. Uh, there is a question from a student. Uh, there is a lot of inconsistency in the upper tropospheric circulation during the northern summer. Can we say, is it due to changes in the tropospheric features? Okay. Excuse me, can, can I catch the first part? It's yeah. A, uh, could you repeat? A, yeah, there is a lot of inconsistency in the upper atmospheric circulation during the northern hemisphere summer. Can we say it is due to changes in the troposphere features? Uh, uh, you, you, the qu question is the upward influence of the modulation. And uh, I think definitely uh, the momentum source is a uh, wave activities in the tropics. And in, my, in mid latitude, Ross V waves. Oh. On the other hand, the tropics, yeah, convection and its organizations. So, wide variety of uh, gravity waves and also the Equatorial waves okay. control the momentum budget in the short sphere. And there is a, some or large modulation of such kind of convective activities due to the El Nino, La Nina, or Madden Julian oscillation, or such kind of uh, variations in the tropos tropical troposphere. So such kind of variation is definitely influence the stratosphere upward. Uh, uh, can the stratosphere modulate the heat and cold waves in the tropics? 
Mozulet. <laughs> I have no exact answer. <laughs> uh, so I think that dynamically uh, similar thing we can argue. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Today I listed up possible possible explanation due to the dyna dynamical uh, explanation due to the vertical shear of the wind or upward motion and the UTS and also the thermodynamical uh, temperature itself or static stability vertical gradient of the potential temperature may influence the convective systems or uh, organization of a complete system as a kind of a top boundary condition for the troposphere. Yeah, uh, if there are no questions, uh, I thank uh, Professor Yoden san uh, ah, okay. for his uh, illustrious and elucidating lecture. It was very informative and um, uh, on behalf of the department and also the students, uh, we are very thankful. And uh, I now invite uh, our head of the department, Dr. C. V. Naidu, to propose a vote of thanks to Professor Shigio Yoden. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening to all. I thank all the persons who have attended the lecture entitled "Stratospheric Influences on the Tropical Troposphere," delivered by Professor. Shiagyo Yodan, Kyoto University, Japan. Professor Yodan is the most prominent researcher in the world in the field of meteorology and a highly respected professor in Japan. Professor Yodan has been publishing very high quality papers on dynamic meteorology, geophysical fluid dynamics, and climate dynamics in highly reputed journals. Dear sir, as a renowned researcher, your expertise is of great value to the web series. <clears throat> we are very fortunate today to hear very informative lecture on stratospheric influences. I should be thankful to you, sir, for giving us an inspiring lecture. I am looking forward for your help in the development of our Department of Meteorology and Oceanography, Andhra University. I hope. You will visit Andhra University and I invite you to visit our department, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Namaste, Namaste, sir. Thank Namaste. you. Yeah, after the co 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 Corona pandemic, I, I really want to visit you again in yeah. Bishka Patanam. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.